<laughs> yeah, you know, I'm not a really big guy. I don't spend much time at the gym, but I get my upper body workout when I'm drilling holes. All right, drilling is hard work, but hard work is good for us. Let's talk for a few minutes about some things you need to know before you start drilling into structure. First of all, there are different types, and we'll cover a few of them here. Let's look at solid wood. You might have 2x8s, 2x10s, or 2x12s. When it comes to drilling in solid wood, you are not to touch the top 2 inches or the bottom 2 inches, and your hole has to be maximum of one third the size of the board. More common these days are the I joist or the TJI, given the name because of the shape. There's a strong top member and a bottom member, and then there's some OSB webbing on the inside of that. That's where we're going to drill our pipes through. We are not allowed to touch or drill or cut the top or the bottom on any of these I joists because that's where all the structural strength is. So our goal is to drill through the webbing. That's the rule of thumb for drilling on these is that for every one inch of hole size, you need to be one foot away from a bearing point. So if I have a four inch hole, I need to be four feet. If I have a three inch hole, I need to be three feet. Check with the manufacturer for details on that. A glue lamp beam is used to span wide spaces or to carry a lot of weight. Often an eye joist will be attached to one of these. Now when we drill these, we gotta be real careful. A glue lamp beam is a whole bunch of sheets of wood that have been glued and compressed together and we can only drill through these if we have permission from an engineer that hole would need to be in the center of the beam because these are so important to structure you want to be real careful not to damage them last let's have a look at the floor trusses these are really easy for running pipes through because there's a lot of open space between support members but because they're a truss you are never to cut notch drill or do anything to the structure now it's time for drilling. I like to use an angle drill like this one made by Milwaukee. It has forward and reverse, low and high speed features, as well as a rotating handle. Totally awesome for drilling. Nowadays you can drill out a whole house with a cordless kit, but I love the power of a corded drill like this. Let's talk about hole saws for a minute. I love these three tooth hole saws because they can chew right through wood, whether it's stud or joist or whatever. You want to select a hole saw that's just a little bigger than the outside diameter of the pipe that you're running. If you give it about a quarter inch, then that will leave space all the way around so that that pipe can expand and contract as it needs to. Hole saws like this one with more teeth can work great as well, but you have to make sure it's rotating in the clockwise direction. My drill here was in reverse, so I had to flip the switch and away we go. The hole saw is attached to an arbor. The arbor has a pilot bit that helps you get your center and hold it. Oops! Uh, yeah, sometimes those pilots get away if they're not tightened in. Yeah, I'll be getting off my ladder to pick that up now. Before you start drilling, of course, you'll need to measure out where your holes are going to go. So if we're passing through some TJIs like this, and you want to have a slope of a quarter inch per foot, you need to do some math, and it's about 3 eighths of an inch for every joist. We add that up, say I'm coming up six inches, the next one will be six and three eighths, the next six and three quarters. In order to make sure that all of our holes line up so that our pipe can run in a straight line through the joist, we're gonna need to measure from something that is also straight. Let's say we're looking up into the joist from below. There's a parallel wall. If I measure 48 inches over, then I can make sure on each joist that I'm equal distance and we can run in a straight line. I like to go through and mark all of my holes and then come with a drill and drill them out. First you can see I set the pilot right on the center of the hole and then away we go. These drills have a lot of torque so you're going to want to hold on tight make sure they don't get away from you. You can get an extension for the bit that can help you to push through one hole and drill into another. I'm having a little trouble on this one though because I can't get my drill all the way up in the joist. I had to use the extension to be able to drill through to the next joist but you can see if I angle it just a little bit and work it in slowly I'm not quite using the pilot to get my center but I've carved in and boom, I'm through. When it's time to drill for water lines, I like to use this bit. A 1 and 3 8 is the perfect size for running most PEX tubing. I can get an isolator in there. 
So I'll go and I'll mark out all of those holes equal distance from something parallel like a beam on the left there. Then I get up on my ladder and just start drilling them out. <laughs> 